Welcome back, friends and neighbors, to another networking video. This is Bruce Hartpence coming to you live from Rochester Institute of Technology. And we have been working through the material in the new chapters that I wrote for the Packet Guide to Core Network Protocols. Specifically, this is Chapter 10, a UDP, and some of the important protocols that use UDP are DNS and DHCP. And so that's what we're going to work through this time. And so without further ado, this is the additional content from Chapter 10 in the Packet Guide to Core Network Protocols. Here we have a basic network. And there are a bunch of rules that we have on a basic network for hosts that wish to communicate. Before you can do anything, you have to have four numbers. I'm very fond of saying that there's four numbers that we need on a network to communicate. You need an IP address. You need your mask to indicate what network you're on. You need a gateway or a router to help you get off the network. And then you need a domain name server to help you convert between IP addresses and human readable names. But a perfectly valid question is that when you want to do all this interneting, how do you get those values? If you have a small network, you can statically assign those. So you can walk around every PC, every Mac, every smartphone, every, every device that's on there, every printer, and give it those values that we need. But the minute the network gets to be of any size, it's much easier to run a service that does that. And the service that we're going to talk about is the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol and the DHCP server. So, you know, when you have your network full of routers and switches and other nodes and all that stuff, on top of all that equipment, you have to have some services running. And that's what we're tackling right now. So what is DHCP? Well, the acronym is Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. It is described in RFC 2131. This is not the very first one. This one obsoletes the previous Boot P Protocol, RFC. And this has also been updated. And the reason that it's been updated so many times is that because there's a lot of stuff that you can do with the DHCP uh, server that you have on your network. So just to cover some, some operational details here, DHCP uses UDP ports 67 and 68. And that just depends on, or which one you use, just depends on which direction the traffic is flowing. And the very basic idea that we're dealing with here is that you need an IP address and a mask on the network, you need to get them from somewhere. If you're not going to statically configure them, most times you're going to be getting it from DHCP. There are a couple of other ways, but we're going to go with DHCP because that is what 99.999% of all the networks out there do. The basic idea is IP address and mask, but you can get a lot more from DHCP. The two other values are the ones that I described earlier your DNS and your gateway. Those are the two other big ones. But historically, we could get things like our WINS or a secondary D DNS value. You can also get the, the IP addresses of other servers. So a really good example and something that I spend a lot of time with is voice over IP. When you're running a voice over IP DHCP server, another basic item that the phones need to know is where the TFTP update server is. Time servers are another example of something that's very valuable to have. Sometimes we even give those phones the call server address via DHCP. So we talk about basic operation here for a sec. We have to get these network parameters. But here's a funny, funny thing about this. We are trying to get the parameters that allow us to communicate on the network, like our IP address. And these parameters have to come from the network via DHCP. So the question is, how do I get parameters from the network that tell me how to communicate on the network when I don't have anything to communicate on the network? And the answer to that question is broadcast messaging. So again, to rephrase this, you have to make a request to the network for an IP address, but you don't have any ability to communicate with an IP-based network yet, but somehow you have to figure out how to communicate. So we're going to wrap everything up in broadcast messaging. This is one of the reasons why when you read about DHCP, we often say that the DHCP server must be on the same network 
as the hosts that are going to use it. This is because we're using broadcast frames, and broadcast frames do not get forwarded beyond a router. However, one of the updates to DHCP allows us to do something called DHCP Relay, which simply says that you're going to tell a router to identify the, the DHCP requests that come out and forward them to a particular IP address or DHCP server that's sitting on another network. So that's how we get by that. There are a number of DHCP messages defined in the RFC. The four we're going to talk about here are DHCP Discover, Offer, Request, and Acknowledgement. So when you want to find a DHCP server, the first one that you send out is this DHCP Discover. That's very much this broadcast frame. You can see in the packet list below that the DHCP Discover message, that's the third one down there, that one is using broadcast messaging in the destination. Now this is broadcast messaging at or broadcast address at layer 3 and at layer 2. Another thing that's interesting to note about this particular set of addresses is that the source address is 0.0.0.0. It is the only time that we see packets using this particular IP address. This is not to be confused with default gateways. This actually appears in IP packets. And that's because the node making this offer, or I'm sorry, the node making this discover, doesn't have an IP address to communicate with. That's what he wants from the network. When the DHCP server comes back, he offers, the DHCP offer, a particular IP address to the node that made the discover, or sent out the discover packet. And we can see here that the address for our DHCP server is 10140100254. When the offer is made, the node making the request via the DHCP discover says, oh, I, I kind of like that IP address. I'd like that one. Thank you very much. And makes a request of the server for that particular IP address. If the server agrees, he comes back and says, I acknowledge your request. And at that point, the node is free to use the IP address. And we can see that the IP address offered and then accepted by the node is 10140100.2. Also in this list are some of the other DHCP messages that you can that you'll see on a network. Uh, we're not going to cover those here. You can take a look at the chapter for those. What is interesting, the last thing that I'll point out about this, this packet list, is that all of the messages that are together, or that are trying to accomplish the same thing, have the same transaction ID. And so that's one of the ways that we can tell these came from a particular conversation. Here is an example of a DHCP offer. We can see that there are a number of fields here, but the ones that I want to focus on are that IP, mask, DNS, and gateway that you're going to be using for this particular network transmission. And these are all that second second message that we saw in our packet list. Well, that'll about do it for this particular video. There you can see there's there's not a whole lot to the basic operation of DHCP. Although running a DHCP server and then deciding what you're going to do with your DHCP server and the other messages indicate that there is some additional complexity to DHCP. But there you have the basics. Remember that these were from Chapter 10 in the Packet Guide to Core Network Protocols. Next up, we'll take a look at some of the DNS or Domain Name System architecture. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for listening. And may your packets always reach their destinations.